online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everyone, and welcome to After TV. The show for America's Got Talent. We are so close to the finals. They are going to be declaring a winner. The men over there are laughing for reasons that I feel left out of, but we got the top 12 tonight and then we got it down to six, but let's start talking about them. I'm Corey Takei and with me, I've got these lunatics. I've got Kevin John. Yes, and I am wearing a shirt today. Woo! What? <laughs> I, I love shirts. That's oh, all. okay. And you, Daniel and Weiss. I'm Daniel Weiss, and you're hearing this for the first time tonight. Huh? All right. It was a little different. The yeah, first time. Yeah. First what time. First, the first is time the, is always different. This is okay. the first time that we're <laughs> recording this tonight. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I think that tonight was a show, and I let's get on tomorrow. Yeah, let's talk about just uh, Mara Justine. I'm so, all confused. I, I think we should do a take three of this. I mean, my <laughs> guess is uh, there were some mic issues that you guys have a problem with. Just, just let me know. Let it out. Let I don't know up. what's going on. Well, let's just let's keep going. <laughs> Apparently, For people who are listening at home, they might not know what's going on. So let's talk about it, Mara Justine. Come on, guys. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to repeat what I said the first time <laughs> yes, around. Yes, do it again. She was absolutely, positively sabotaged by her microphone. Uh, the microphone was a huge detriment to her performance because I thought she sounded great, but there was this echoey thing coming out. It was like a microphone malfunction, and it ultimately did not do justice for her voice. All right. I agree. I think that people at home might have been watching, and people that don't know technical aspects might have just been like, oh, she's off tonight. She's bad and didn't vote for her, which I think they just don't get. It was, I absolutely think she got voted off because she did not have a working microphone, a properly working microphone. So it's kind of tragic that her mic may have costed her... her I think so. I, I think that she was like this instead of like this, and that sounds very different. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you know what, guys? She's young, so she has a future ahead of yeah, her. I, I mean, heartache so. to heartache, she stands. I mean... No promises, no demands. Well, I mean, look look at uh, Jackie Ivanko, who was actually um, in the result show. She's, right. She's made five albums, and she's doing really good, and she looks great. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not worried about Marge Steen at all. Okay, let's talk about David and Lehman, these uh, comedian magicians. I like them. They're a brush of, breath I thought they were great. of fresh air because they're not only... Uh, magicians, but they're comedians as well, and I like the fact that they're two people, so it kind of keeps people more engaged and more entertained rather than just one magician. It's a kind of nice change. I agree with you. I, I, I think that they, they have a nice combination of humor and magic and blending the two of those. Mm -hmm. I've always said before a million times, if you watch the show, you know, when it comes to magic, I love showmanship. And I, you know, I, I think that is a, you know, a, a critical part of being a good magician is to be able to have the showmanship, which they had. I don't know how much I was amazed by their trick tonight. I mean, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it, it was, I would say it was average. I mean, it didn't wow me or anything, but it was, it was, it was pretty cool. But okay. I like them. I think I like them more than I actually like the trick that they did tonight. All right. Okay. I, I agree with you. In general, I really like them more than their particular performances in general. So, mm. but it's a whole package. I liked the I liked the trick until uh, one of our texts here, Stephen, pointed out exactly how he thinks <laughs> it happened, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, good point." But my, my thing you do is, that to me all the time. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's now I'm like, okay, maybe it wasn't that amazing of a trick. <laughs> I thought that the, I here's my thing. I don't think they're the best magicians that have been on the show this season. I think they were the best magicians that were on tonight. Okay. All right. Because everybody did a guessing act. Every every single magician did, I'm going to predict what like this is going to be. Yeah. I'm going to. What happened to tricks? What up? 
there, well, there, there, theirs was somewhat of a guessing thing. That's they what I'm at, saying. All of the acts oh. tonight. Yeah. I thought you said all of them except for theirs. I mean, okay. No, all of them, okay. period. So that's why out of all three, they were the best. I see. But I feel like almost every... There's no big magicians anymore. There's no I appearing, mean, disappearing, changing that's, that's this, true. this season. you got to realize, though, I a lot of the magicians now... It, well, well, you go realize that a lot of magicians now are doing the whole interactive thing with the audience. What do you have here? What yeah. am I going to do? What, what is your number? Your favorite number? Look at this card. Tell me what this card is. Everything now is a lot more interactive versus going on stage and, you know, making something disappear or making, cutting somebody in half or whatever but it see, is. I, the I, traditional I, music. I totally understand what Daniel's saying because yeah. we are kind of missing the element of just danger and surprise yeah. and shock value and how the heck did they do that where yeah. this is it's nice and intimate but how how much can they um, right. so provide them, for a large I'll make audience? Daniel's phone disappear watch and come out of my mouth. Uh, but you guys you don't know how whoa. to do that trick. <laughs> oh sorry Look, I don't know. That Pretty being easy. said for me <laughs> this season particularly they are probably my favorite magicians for this season. Obviously America didn't Agree with me, but we'll get to that. Right, well, and uh, our good friend Joseph Boza on the board just said, and I completely agree, I don't see what Matt brought that they didn't, what Matt Franco yes. brought. What's That's my thing, is of the magicians, what was better other than maybe he's cuter than them? I don't know. But I, I would say, uh, first of all, because they have a comedic factor and already they have more entertainment value than Matt Franco, in mm. my opinion. But. I think Matt Franco, you know, he, he he does have a lot of charisma. He has that million dollar smile, and I don't know, maybe that wooed the judges over. But the thing that pissed me off about Matt Franco's perform or his trick, whatever you want to call it, was that he, in no way, shape, or form, did he belong the audience that was there, the live mm -hmm. audience, in on his trick. The whole time, it would the whole trick was done at a small. He could have did the trick in here. He didn't need a freaking stage with thousands of people. He just mm -hmm. completely did not play to the audience. And that's one thing that I dislike, especially with a theater background. You show everything is to the audience. Yeah, it's okay. Let's, let, you know what? Let's talk about Matt Franco. Yeah, Let, let's get here. him out the way while we're here. Let's talk yes. about the magicians, actually, because yeah. he ends up making it through out of the three magicians. Right. Which I don't packs. understand. And also, his first part of his trick was so hackney to me as a magician. He takes. Are you, a are you a magician? Yes. Okay. Sure, why not? <laughs> He, I'm saying for a magician, <laughs> he takes a deck and he says, I'm going to do this for the people at home. And he, you know, flips it up to the camera. But the he purposefully, the only card that you see is the king of hearts. That's the only, we stopped, we paused it. We went back. That's the only card that you can see. Let's be real. He, we didn't even have to pause it. It was it right. paused on its but own. Then, no, but we went back <laughs> and rewound it. Yeah. And slowed it down and he just made it so that that's the only card yeah. you see. And then he shot this cannon and then you look up for the first time anyone has tonight with the lights on and see the card that he planted there earlier today. Yeah. I mean... I'm I'm a little upset that he was the out of the three magician acts he was the one chosen to go through, because I really thought David and Lehman had a better overall entertainment factor to them, and the third magician magic act that didn't go through. Let's talk about them. It was uh, shoot I don't remember. There was one more guy. Oh yeah, um, the guy with um, the ghost thing. Uh, yes, Mike Super. Mike with Super. Desmond. That's right with Desmond. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think of him? He didn't he say <laughs> something? Is it bad that I'm trying to remember what his trick was? Well, didn't he yeah, say I'm something sorry. that he was like, "Oh, this is the most <laughs> dangerous trick I'm gonna do" or something he like that? He said that all the time. But he said something like that, and there was no danger to it. He just, uh, I will say, it was cool. I liked him again. I liked him much better than Matt Franco. Mm -hmm. He had he had Nick put out eight different cards face down mm -hmm. then he had Nick go in this machine and grab money and grabbed a dollar out and then the number on the dollar matched the ones on the card and matched this paper that he sent to Howard. He had a lot of like Howard. just randomness going on that right. just didn't... But it was a better trick Yeah. Then I honestly think that Matt Franco of all three was the least and he went through. 
You know, the problem here is all of these magicians are dinner theater magicians. They are cruise ship magicians where they come around your table and entertain you. These people are not ready for the big stage and their tricks do not um, engage a big audience. I would be I would be appalled if I went to a theater show of them somewhere, say, at the Mirage in Vegas to go a night with Matt or Franco, whatever, <laughs> and he does that little BS car. I, I would be outraged, okay? Because... <laughs> And is he going to go to every audience member and stand in front exactly. of them because he doesn't have a big stage show? Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. A lot of these magicians that we saw tonight are just freaking, dinner, you know, come around your table at a, at a cruise ship and, oh, look at this, you know, or, or, or children's parties uh, magicians. They're not magicians like Copperfield or Chris Angel or people like that. Can They can use a major stage and do some wow out of this world stuff. And the reason I'm going hard on them is because there's, we're down to 12. We just narrowed it down to six out of all the magician acts in America and this is what you guys have to give and what to have to offer mm -hmm. it, to me it was it, I was not at all immune matter of fact they should have actually went back and pulled freaking um, that one other act that g got canceled I forgot what it, what the name was but the other act we all know who it is I have no, no idea, no what idea Kevin about. John no idea the audience at home knows what I'm talking no, about they do I don't not. think they do <laughs> at any rate I don't think I, honestly magic this particular show this season was just embarrassing that's I think was. they got rid of the best magicians in the second round I thought of this David show. and Lehman are good but let's you guys let's move on for a little bit let's talk about um, Sons of Sarah Dip who actually went um, into the Snapple round we'll talk about them later um, Sons of Sarah Dip you guys saying ordinary world I thought it was really good Kevin John it's like your favorite act Daniel picks on you for it uh, uh, well Daniel so let's just... ask Daniel how do you think they did I thought they were good here's mm -hmm. what I say I think the singer's really good and then the band just makes me feel like if it was a solo singer and then they got a band to do background for him I don't see anything different with the band than I would with any other band, me personally. But I will say the singer's really good. I liked it, but it's um too many singers. Okay. Daniel, but see that's the thing. It's yes, not my a singer. Friend. It is a band, I just not a said singer. That. Exactly. So, so I would categorize band, him. Get back in the camera, Daniel. Okay? I, yeah. I refuse. <laughs> so for a band, then you want you brought this out as a band. They're mediocre. I don't think the band is anything Daniel. bigger than a band. When was the band? last oh. time you went to see a live band that played the harp? Contemporary, mind you. There's a reason. My point exactly. There's a My reason point exactly. for it. I, well, okay, no. what's the reason? It doesn't belong in music. No, the I, harp? What? I am totally Daniel, on team. Daniel, slap yourself. I am on team Kevin John here. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm sure you it's, are. It's Thank you. innovative. It's different. Innovative? It's nice. Yes. Whatever language I'm speaking English right now. Okay. How are you? So I like them. Yeah. I like them. And they went through. Thank you. And they deserve they to did. go through. They deserve to go through because the thing is, they, I, I think, uh, um, like Kaori uh, said, they are innovative. And, you know, they're they're very creative in the sense that they're using these instruments that you don't see a lot of times in modern day band, the harp particular. Not even at Sears, Daniel. Yeah, not even at Sears. Yeah. I from, see them at Sears all the time. <laughs> I, that must be a dream that you're having. And look, so, like their music, it, it kind of touches me and makes me feel emotional. I like their sh Stuff. Thank well, you. here's the thing. Thank you. As much Thank as you, you guys like them, they did not get voted this week in the regular. They're still round. going through. But they're they going got, through. They're still going through. By they're going Snapple. Through. They're going. Th you know, like they I don't. In the Snapple round, they put uh -huh. the in the Snapple round they put the fifth, yes. sixth, and seventh people. Uh -huh. For all we know, they could have been fifth or sixth or, or seventh or seventh. Yes. But all right. look, I think that they're very talented. I don't think they're at the level that you guys think they are. But that's why it's my opinion. And you know what? That's I think, why it's your opinion. I think that you're hating. I right think now. so too. Why am I hating you? We, this is a show where we talk about the show. That's what we're doing. Yeah. I'm giving you my opinion. No, yeah, biased opinion. That's uh, what you're giving. All right. Bi okay, you, you want to talk about opinions? <laughs> Go back and listen to last season and see how I was talking about Taylor Williamson and you two were. Not. I'll bring that up later. What are you talking what are you about? Ta yeah, I have no I idea what you're talking Taylor about. Williams. We'll now talk about do. that later. Now yeah. you do. Uh, who, you I never he, hated on him. Just for the record, I'm not even going to say it. All right, so next one. <laughs> let's do Christian and Scooby. 
for I think Christian actually looked, uh, listened to the judges, took their advice, and didn't really utilize the dog as much. It wasn't the star of the show. Now, Christian didn't go through, but we saw a lot more of him, which was a nice change. And I'm saying that because even though I'm obsessed with dogs, that being said, I'm kind of glad he didn't go through because he wasn't, you know, one of the best performances. I agree. I feel like he went backwards. I feel like his best performance was his first performance. Sure. And then he kept going in the way... Uh, like, this one would have been good for his second performance. I just don't think it was nearly as good. I'm losing my voice. Good. It's okay. So yeah. it's we'll get you some hot tea. It's back. No, uh, I, I just... I felt like he wasn't great. Okay. You know, I... I <sighs> The thing with him is that other than doing a few handstands and taking a shirt off, there's really not much to him that amazes me. You know, it, the dog is cute. I'm going to admit that I think he, you know, won over the hearts of America so with the dog cute. alone. So, cute. so I did, And the dog really had no purpose, too, today. And He's whatever, cute. the dog had no, it just walked out and, like, went into a box. <laughs> and stood it there. didn't even go in the box. He <laughs> had put the dog in yeah, the box. He's exactly. so cute. I didn't, I didn't understand the purpose of the dog today. A anyways, that's besides me. But, yeah, yeah at the end, I, I just think he can do some handstands, and he likes to take his shirt off. And, and he it, uses a dog. Yes, yeah, so and it's always kind of the same act. The handstands on those on those little bar things exactly. at the end. Uh, let me look at me balance. Definitely not a million dollar act. Sorry. And how would you even turn it into a Vegas show? That's what I'm saying. Like, mm -mm. unless you, you better hope Scooby is prepared because right? he would, yeah. yeah. All right, what about Emil and Dario? Is that their names? Because yes. my iPad does a lot of uh, autocorrect. They uh, did some cello music to Armageddon and they had people is in the that background. Is called Armageddon? It's, I know, but... It's a song everyone knows wrote, from Armageddon. Yes. See, Kevin's so much nicer than you right yes, now. Yes, he is. Yes. Oh, my you, gosh. Because you sided with him on his boyfriend. No, it's just because some of us here are aren't a-holes all the time. Oh, no. Look, you, we're, we're all friends here, and we they're, are. they're, they're are kidding. We? we do love each other. This is, Me and Daniel this is hang tough out love. This. So, <laughs> yes, if you guys we are do. listening, we are really... We're you not, can catch us yeah. at Tito's Tacos after this. We'll be hanging out. This is true. This is true. Now, why would someone want to go to Tito's Tacos? Well, I'll tell you. Tito's no, no, Tacos no. has the freshest ingredients, has the best, okay. best grilled food that you would like in a taco. It's My oh. friends, I'm going to get you in the Tito's Tacos. I know Tito's Tacos, today. but let's talk about these cellists. <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, cellos. Let's take it to the cellos. Cello. I like the thing with them is, from what I remember, their past few recent performances, they really incorporate incorporated that rock thing into their cello. They were like rock on on, and you know they, they were playing some very high energy songs. I liked how they started off with the "I Don't Want to Miss a Thing" Aerosmith song and because it was, um, you know, and if you keep singing that while I do my review, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't want to go. So, anyways, um, so like I was saying. I don't when I saw them initially come out and do that, I thought it was a very nice change and very, you know, it was different than what we normally saw from them. And then they had that part where they started to intensify it a little bit and it got a little more heavier. But other than that, it was just very melodic. It was very peaceful. It was and, nice. And it showed their range. It was good. Okay. Singer, thoughts? I don't even think that was, I don't want to miss a thing you're singing. I, I it was, but it wasn't probably not the right lyrics. Look, he's like, I messed up. <laughs> I thought that they were good, except when they actually brought, speaking of singers, when Did they you brought... just burp? That was gross, no, I, was, I, I When they brought I the actual it, singers I out... Would have missed okay, oh, no, 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 no rapping, do I don't want to miss a thing. Yo, because I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to close my eye. I... When they brought out the background <laughs> singers, I thought they drowned them out. Miss you, babe. Drowned oh. them out. No, drowned it. I thought they drowned <laughs> them out. Uh, what's the grammar police here? today? I'm actually the grammar Nazi here, so okay, go. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. My last name is Weiss. I don't appreciate that. Uh, so. Um, I get what? it. I get it, but. We don't have to get Pearl uh, We could have got here. really we nasty there. Pearl Pearl nice, no. Harbor up in here. So, I thought that when they brought out the backup singers that you couldn't hear the cellos anymore. Okay. That was a bad idea. All because right. Because it's about cellos. All right. Acro Army guys, what do you think of them? <laughs> um, yeah, I... 
<laughs> it's a drill team, okay? They made it through, but it's a drill team, Thank you. and I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I agree. It's a drill team at a cheerleading competition that is doing drills and whatever that's called. Uh, it's, yeah, it's talent because I can't do it, but you know, it's um, yeah, I, I have nothing to say really. All right, Daniel, you got something to say? Uh, say th I thought they did some really cool stuff this week. This was probably my favorite act of theirs. I agree, yeah. Still not amazing. Still not worth being in the top mm -hmm, 12, mm -hmm. but I thought that for them, it was good. Okay, all right. And what about uh, Octavius singing I'm Quintavious. going down. Octavius, Quintavious. Quintavious. I think he could win it. I think he can I win think it. he's really good. He's really talented. Keep that up while I talk. <laughs> I've said this before. When you look, especially when you get to this round, but when you look at the kid acts, are they good because they're a kid doing this? Or are they good, period? And I think he smokes the singers that he's we have good. this season. He's good. He's good, period. Smokes them. By the way, children, smoking is not good for you. Whatever it is you smoke, unless it's a salmon... Just don't smoke, Kevin. Kevin. Oh, but speaking of... Course of course you would want to smoke salmon. But okay. speaking of smoked salmon, Tito's Tacos has a great smoked Look, salmon taco this Kevin, week. Kevin, John, please interrupt. Special. I it am. I'm going to interject. So, off the lot. Drive it though, off the lot. Even though that sounds good, what sounded even better tonight was Quintavious. I mean, this kid right here, if you put together Luther Vandross, the power of Brian McKnight... Okay. The, the the over the vocal cords of Freddie Jackson. Okay. And just the entertainment of a young Michael Jackson, you have a recipe for Quintav Quintavious. This guy's phenomenal. I, you know, not only, and the thing is, a lot of times as a kid when they're singing, they don't really have a lot of good vocal control, mm -hmm. but he has perfect control on every, the, 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 uh, uh, flung, um, uh, what is it called? No one knows. Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, the way he fluctuates <laughs> on each word, the way that he um, pushes each 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 rhythm, each rhythm. I've never been a vocal sings? coach. His delivery. Sings? His delivery. The musical? way he it sings. It was one hundred percent impeccable. One hundred. All right. Impeccable. I think he was great. I, I thought he made a really good rendition of the song, and he deserves to be in My that spot. Whole world. He deserves so to be in that down. spot, and I'm so glad that he can upstage you guys in that song. Um, but let's talk <laughs> about uh, Blue Journey, because we've been with them throughout their entire journey, because we were journey. there. <laughs> yes, in we were Blue. there at their initial audition. They made it pretty far. They didn't make it this time around. Again, we I think we were impressed with them, and we can appreciate the creativity, but... After seeing such precision and fun and lasers and all that stuff with Kenichi, it just doesn't stand a chance. It's the wrong season. They maybe yes. a couple seasons later or something, you know? Right. I agree. I think this was the best, again, best performance yeah. they've had. But that doesn't make them the best performers, period. I think that's been a lot of this season, and especially tonight, was mm -hmm. it's... These, I just feel like a lot of acts went through that on other seasons. Like, if this was last season, I feel like none of this top 12 would have been there. Mm -hmm. So I think that Blue Journey was good tonight, just still not on par with acts that they should be. Okay. At this point, Kevin. I agree. I agree with you, Daniel. Uh, I think, honestly, you could take the top six acts from last year, and any one of them would easily be the winner this year on America's Got Talent. And um, I, I, it's, it's just, it's really just an off year. Um, they, there, are, there are, there are a few good acts, as you can say, you know, Quintavious, Sons of Serendip. You know, there's a few ones that are, you know, really stand out there. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, Blue Journey specifically, because I think that's what we're on. Uh, I, I, you know, I like the fact that they're creative and they try to incorporate their performance with the backdrop, the uh -huh. screen, and they do try to do these stories and stuff like that. I, I do like that because it's different. It's not just them dancing out there. So, um, and it's a little more entertaining to watch. But then again, there's only certain things, speaking of watching, that we can see on TV that they probably can't see in the audience, like when they do the aerial views and things of that sort. Uh, but yeah, you know they they were good. They weren't horrible. I mean, I, they were good. They they were pleasant to watch. Yeah, 
All right. Well, let's talk about Emily West, the one who took the spot from Mara Justine. Now, I know that some of our viewers commented that, you know, get over it because obviously she does have a, you know, contract and all that stuff, but there's a lot of talent that's already had experience. But look, I just don't agree with her being in this particular show. It's well, not let's get her. past that. Let's now rate it as if we didn't know that she had okay. a previous experience. Okay, she's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. She is. Um, she, she did have uh, people in the back, but they didn't do anything. They just stood there like mannequins. I thought that was a little odd. I like her style. I think it's unique in a certain way. She has a very, like, 19, like, 50 salon, saloon style thing going on. I can appreciate her music. I could. And her voice. But I, you know, I, I think she's a great singer, yeah. and uh, obviously, what we've seen on American Idol totally justifies why she's had recording contracts and mm -hmm. why she's an established singer. Because she's a great singer. Mm -hmm. That's why. But America's Got Talent is all about discovering and finding talent. It's not about getting established talent that already does have a uh, following, uh, record label, albums out, and things of that sort. So how much should America's Got Talent have credit for her? I don't know because she That's was true. already known. Now, yes, granted they gave her a platform to mm -hmm. be re-noticed or, you know, rediscovered by the general public, but... Yeah, you know, I, I think that bothers me more than, you know, her um, being a great singer. Okay. All right. Now, I feel like for some reason they want singers to be big this year. And so... Having half got, of them were singers, right. it felt like. So yeah. I feel like they, the producers have her on, made her give this backstory about how, oh, I had a contract, but now I struggle, and it's tough and difficult. So as far as that, I feel like it's just... This story of how can we justify having a big singer on that's going to win. That's how I feel. You think she's going to win? I think she could because oh, yeah. I think they're forcing her on us. Okay. I think she's a very good singer. All right. I don't want to see a singer win because this isn't a show about singers. All right. Okay. What? It's a, it's called America's Got Talent. It's a show about anything. Right. Which is amazing. It's like a variety yeah. Right. show. Yeah. Which includes just, singers. Look, I I think she's fine. I don't think she's the best talent on the show. But then again, this sh season <clears throat> isn't very talented. But I think she's a good singer. Okay. Well, I wouldn't All buy right. her album because well, I just don't care. Well, what do you think of our last singer of the night, Miguel Dakota? I care less. Okay. I don't think he did a very good job tonight. It was his worst performance. Yes, I think he honestly. started off. I just, I think he started off poorly. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was able to recover. I thought it was even worse than his audition. Right. I would be. Here's my thing. If I saw him in concert and he sang like that, I'd walk out going, "Well, that sucked. That it, wasn't worth the ticket." It's it's almost like he <laughs> felt comfortable. Song. Like he. It's almost like he got so much compliments that he was like, I'm just right. going to coast it this this It does set. kind of feel like that. Maybe yeah. he didn't warm up before the show. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a good song choice for him either because it, it, like, it drowned him out. The, the background singers who, you know, performed better than he did. Kevin. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like Bruce Springsteen on crack. I mean, it, it, was, it was horrible. Like... If he had did that performance in one of the first shows, I don't even think the judges would have passed him through. Right. He probably would have got three X's if he did that same exact performance in the very beginning. I was, I mean, they had to be embarrassed that this guy isn't a finalist and put on a performance like that. I, I, I don't know what was going through his head. I don't know if he, if you know, he was taking the night off because he thought he was good or had it, but right. damn, he should have, he, maybe it was a song selection. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It yeah. was kind of a snoozer. For I him. agree. So he got down to the Snapple save. Yes. Well, and let's... then it got down to what are you doing with your hands? I well, was gonna. We're... I'm working up to what you're getting to. No, because I want to get so, to other things before that. Do you? Yes, I want to talk about how the results show we had Kermit Remember the Frog. Remember who the lead host on here is? Oh, no, I'm so no, sorry. No, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well, let's get to it then. Uh, I'll let you get to it then. Kermit the Frog. Well, let me say that like, Kermit the Frog was on the results show, and we were like. Why aren't the Muppets that funny? Sorry. Right. Why were the Muppets not, why, were they were the Muppets coming out with a movie or something? I don't understand the promotion of them. I well, they're just cute. Uh, no, I think that it's for their DVD, maybe. Oh, okay. ah, trying to boost sales again ah. for their DVD. But 
And then, I just think they weren't funny. I don't know who wrote it, but they were just say, like... It was weird. At the very end, they didn't even try to make a joke. They were just, okay, Nick, we don't want to get in your way. We're going to leave. Oh, Nick yeah. Cannon. I should have been in a cannon. Oh, something with Piggy. Bye! <laughs> and then yeah. Kevin even pointed out that it didn't sound like Kermit was doing his best. Yeah, yeah. Like, his, his Hi, accent I'm was Kermit just like... the Frog. How is it going? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, it, it sounded nothing like Kermit. The, there was no punchline with the jokes. Mm-hmm. Not only were some of the acts the talent bad tonight, but, I mean, Kermit the Frog and the Muppets didn't do anything to salvage that on that show, so... Uh, yeah, they were kind of coasting it, too, just like Miguel might have been doing. And Jackie Ivanko was there, too, and she, she's grown up a lot, and she's still a great singer. Yes. And... Uh, Kevin wants to know how old she is, so we looked her up, and now she's 14. We didn't have to even Did bring you just say, up. I wanted to know how old? I, I was just... So let's not keep going. Let's yeah, so let's keep going. All right, so now we had Emily West of The Singers went through, the Agro Army of The Dancers went through, Quintavious went through, and Matt Franco, to our surprise, took the spot for The Magicians. And then the saves for the Snapple save between Miguel Dakota, Sons of Sarah Dip, and Ian D., E and D, I wrote that. Um, the viewers chose Sons of Serendip, and the judges. Okay, go ahead now. So the judges came down to it, and it was uh, the judges can save one of the two, Miguel Dakota or E and D. Yes. And so, of course, the girls voted for the guy. They specifically said, "Oh, Miguel Dakota's hot." So I vote for him. Oh, Miguel's hot. I voted for him. So the two girls voted for him. Then Howie said, then the show got cut off. At least for us, the recording got cut off. So we didn't get to see what happened. Carrie looked it up. I Corey. looked it up. I looked it up. Oh, my goodness. Okay, who do you guys think went through? I, I'm thinking Miguel went through, but if he did go through, I'm walking off. I'm walking off the studio right now. Are you going to do Miguel a Daniel was... freak out I, over I, Wendy Liebman? No, because that was creepy. What about you? Who do you think went there? I I don't even know. I think something shady happened. I think Miguel went through for shady reasons. Yeah. And but you guys were saying that you wanted E and D to go through. I want E and D. I want E and D to go through too. Yeah. I want E and D to go through. Miguel went through. (laughs) Did they say who voted? Bye. No, I just said like I, I just read it real quick. Come back, Kevin. We're going to need you for the next hour after this. Because to cheer you guys up, we've got Taylor Williamson that's going to be in the studio. So get get back here. I know, it's sad. T- Miguel, congratulations. However... I have nothing else to say the rest of the show. Well, Okay, well, in that case, let's just wrap it up. But I want to know real quick, who do you guys predict is going to take... This season. Okay, I lied. Quintavious is going to take the season. <laughs> wow. Easily. Nice. Right. I'm glad I cheered you up. He is incredible. You always cheer me up, Kelly. It's that million dollar smile. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, Quintavious is going to uh, is gonna take it all. He, this this kid, not only does America love him, but he's the most talented. At the end of the day, he's the most talented, I feel, out of them. He's going to take it. Okay. He's right. going to take it. Daniel. I predict I don't give a crap. Oh, Daniel. I love that I don't Cheer give a crap. He yeah, did a great I think job. it's going to be Emily West, but I want it to be Quintavious. Okay, and I am I am hoping for, uh, at this point, gosh, Quintavious. At this point, Quintavious. Okay. All right, guys, that about wraps us up. Go over to iTunes and rate, comment, and let us know what you thought about this show, which, how you doing about AGT and all the choices that have been made thus far. Also, go on YouTube, drop a comment. We keep the conversation going over there. And also, follow us on Twitter. Fellas, where can we follow you? And also, real quick, check out the interview we're about to do. Yes, of course. Check out the interview we're about to do. It will be on iTunes. It will be on YouTube. It will be live right after this with the runner-up of last season, Taylor Williamson. Woo! Yes! Fan yes! favorite. Yes! We love him. We're excited to have him in the studio. He's hanging out. Daniel's really excited. I'm so he's excited because so he's the most talented person. You told that you to Tone the can... Chief Rocker when he was here. Well, that's different. Tone the Chief Rocker is above everyone yes. else. I will say this. Find me at It's Daniel Weiss on Twitter and my improv group, Doctor Who Live. Why are you We're freezing doing like you're running? It's kind of cute. I'm like, li- this is my I like superhero this. pose. All right. Now, that's your trying to flex pros, but you don't have a bicep. KJ. And uh, you can find me on. 
Twitter and Instagram at HeyKevinJohn or on my website, it's Kevin Dot com. I didn't throw you off by saying KJ. I, I was testing that out. No, I, I, people call me KJ all the time. All right. Yeah, because Kevin John's kind of a long name. It's super long. Yeah. I mean, you got to break it up. Kevin John. Yeah. Hey, it's Kevin John. It's Kevin. Okay. You, you just you, like screaming my name, don't you? Uh, you can find me at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S, Corius, on Instagram as well as Twitter. And stay tuned for Taylor Williamson's interview by us crazy three and we will catch you guys next week for the finals of America's Got Talent. Yes! Thank you for tuning in. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed are those of the hosts only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.